Uh, good afternoon. Uh, today's session is a joint session. Uh, during our stage, we have a four joint session. Okay, thank you for joining us for 25th anniversary, Korean Surgical Society of La Paz Society and the Chinese Joint Symposium. My name is Woo Jung Lee, Severance Hospital, Seoul, Korea Yonsei University. Uh, my co-chair uh, some problem, but okay. Uh, now I'm going to uh, start the, uh, today's session. Today we have uh, four presentation, uh, two Chinese doctor and two Korean doctor. Okay, the first session is um, by uh, Dr. Peng Bing. He's, uh, he's uh, um, West China Hospital in Suchan, Sichuan uh, University. He uh, briefly, uh, his education is he graduated medical school of uh, Suzhou University in uh, Jiangsu province in 1989. Okay, today's title is uh, Laparoscopic Duodenum Preserving Pancreatic Head Resection. Okay, Dr. Peng, please. It's my great honor to be here to present my presentation. Our topic is Laparoscopic Duodeno preserving pancreatic head resection. A single center experience from West China Hospital. First, let, let's start with uh, some background on this project. In 1970s, Hans Burgers first proposed DPPHRP to treat chronic pancreatitis in 1990s. Takto first tried benign and low grade malignant tumor of the head of the pancreas by the method of the DPPHRT. With the development of the mineral invasive surgeries, lip laparoscopic DPPHRT step onto the hospital stage. Uh, minimal invasive DPPHRT T begin with the channel. In 2012, Region Hospital reported four cases of RDP PHRT. In 2020s, our group reported first cases RDP PHRT with full reasons standing guarding and 24 cases of the air DPP HRT. How to perform laparoscopic duodenal preserving pancreatic head resection? Look at this map. The duodenal and the combat ductus can be pre preserved, and the head of the pancreas can be completely removed. How to uh, protect arterial uh, and uh, venous arteries, I think is very important for this procedures. Both of important is arterial arteries. Look at this map. Arterial arteries, including arterial arteries and the posterior arteries. What is the lipo DPPHR indications? First, chronic pancreatitis. The second, benign or no great malignant tumor of head of pancreas, such as SPT, IPMN, MCN, SCN, NET. What is the advantage of the DPPHR? The duodenal integrate is maintained. Trans element of absorption is protected. Gastrointestinal and elastomotic ulcer was effective avoiding. It effective protected the integrate of the binary tract system and the sphincter function of audios. The complications such as binary and intestine elastomotic Tomotic stillness, allows tomotic stoles and the bare reflex after RPD were effective awarding. K 
for uh, laparoscopic DPPHR, a false exposed arterial head of the pancreas, SMA suspension, and uh, stomach suspension, ar arterial blood supply of the CBD and the Dodino. The third export combat duct, uh, export of the pancreatic ductus. The, uh, the end, the pancreatic allostomosis. Mm. Uh, descending uh, hepatic uh, cover nature of the corner and the transverse of the mass color of to the side of the foot. Exposed anterior head of the pancreas identifies on anatomical location of the relevant veins. Look at this map. So this is the surgical wheel show suspensions, stomach suspensions. Uh, the first, uh, the second stomach suspensions or uh, there was uh, treatment to the GDA, ASPDA, and the REGEA. When perform laparoscopic dodino, when perform laparoscopic uh, DPPHR, we, we don't perform the cocoa manure. PSPDA arterial blood supply is very important for the combined duct uh, uh, supply. Uh, a posterior, posterior uh, supra PDA. Now look at this map. Inside the pancreas, the man blood supply arteries to the dodino papiner and the CBD. Look at this map, uh, the PSPDA, uh, first travel uh, on the right side of the CBDA, CBD, uh, then uh, travel behind of, back, behind of the uh, CBD, uh, the end uh, the trial uh, on the left of the CBD, uh, then uh, join PIPDA. This. Look at this map. Arterial blood supply after the head, uh, pancreatic head resections. PSPDA, PIPDA, or uh, PIPDA from IPDA. For the wheel with uh, transfection with five zero PDS two uh, MPD. With the ICG, show the uh, compare duct. In case uh, damage to the compare duct. Our center reports the, the world's first cases of the LDPPHR with ICG guarding in March 2020s on published uh, honors of surgical oncology. Our center reports uh, 24 cases of LDPPHR in March 2020, the largest number eight parent published surgical endoscopic pathology results from 24 cases. The most of cases from IPMN uh, and chronic pancreatitis. This is preoperative complication rights.
Oh, this 24 cases uh, POPF grade BC 4.2 percent. Uh, binary tractors uh, complications uh, three cases 12.5 percent. Rail operations 4.2 percent. Please uh, look at the air laparoscopic DPPH videos. Uh, there is uh, the tumor located the head of the pancreas. First, open the the case uh, colon ligament. First, show the SMV. Like it, the, the healing scan. Then trisect. Suspension of the stomach. This shows the ASPDA. Trisect the, the leg of the pancreas. Trisect the head of the pancreas. It's very important to protect uh, the arterial archers. Obvious posterior arterial archers. So we must dissect very close the pancreas. This is SMA. We also expose the CBD. Oh, this is the CBD with the ICG. After uh, right sections of the head of the pancreas, the arterial arches is 
is integrate. Oh, okay. Uh, binary tract genetic uh, complications. Uh, binary uh, uh, leakage is uh, in most uh, uh, complications after this procedure. It is hard to locate the CBD and the entire head of the pancreas need to be resected. Uh, the second, the same damage is easy to occur when you use electric life and ultrasonic scabbard. The third, uh, the tumor is, is too close to, uh, uh, to the CBD or inflammatory uh, adhesion. This is our, our center. Uh, ICG image shows the manner injury of the CBD. We also search with the PDS two five zero. The second uh, uh, compli complications is the, the bleeding. Post operative complication bleeding. Uh, one case is intestine anastomosis bleeding. We also perform the laparoscopic explore explorations and uh, and the sutures. The second preoperative blood vessel bleeding. One cases we also perform laparoscopic with with the proline five zero proline uh, uh, suture. Post operative complication is the, the binary leakage. Two cases we also perform the conservatives treatment uh, and the delay uh, drainages. One case is uh, from binary leakage. After 10 days, we also perform the, the operations. Binary leakage. Another uh, post-operative complication, CB, CBD structures. Uh, one case is uh, inflammatory stenosis of the distal bare duct is closed. We also perform the uh, uh, intraoperative explorations uh, side to side uh, anastomosis. Uh, compare duct and the uh, intestine. So then, conclusions. At present, there are few studies on LDPPHRT, most of which are cases series report and one retrospective cohort study and the number of cases is relatively small. However, according to the current data, the incidence of the post-operative complication of LDPPHRT is lower than that of DPPHRT, which can reflect the safety of the LDPPHRT to some extent. But randomized control trial are still needed for demonstrations. Long term, outcome and post operative qualities of life need to be evaluated with long term follow up. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your nice presentation. Actually, he's not in our uh, room, so we are going to uh, uh, proceed the next uh, title. Okay, the second presentation is by uh, Sang Hyun Shin in Korea. <clears throat> he is now working at a Samsung Medical Center, Song University School of Medicine. He graduated from medical school in 2006. Uh, okay, today's title is laparoscopic, uh, oh no, various technique for spleen preservation 
in distal pancreatectomy. Dr. Shin, please. Nice to meet you. I'm Sanghyun Shin from Samsung Medical Center. I present various techniques for spleen preservation in laparoscopic distal pancreatectomy. This is the contents of my presentation. At first, I'd like to talk about splenectomy and spleen preservation. In benign or borderline malignant disease of the pancreas, which is your choice, splenectomy or spleen preservation? Splenectomy is reported that it is associated with thromboembolic events, infectious complications, and sometimes severe overwhelming infections. And the patient should receive antibiotic prophylaxis and lifelong vaccinations. In this paper, the authors showed the distal pancreatectomy with splenectomy, DPS, was associated with a longer hospital stay and more POPF than spleen preserving distal pancreatectomy, SPDP. And this meta-analysis compared SPDP with DPS. It also showed the occurrence of infectious complication and intra-abdominal abscess were superior in SPDP group. So at present, it is widely accepted that spleen preservation is a feasible and safe procedure in benign or borderline malignant disease of the pancreas. Now I will present various techniques for spleen preservation. The first splenic vessel preservation. In this paper, the authors compared splenic vessel preservation, vessel ligation, and splenectomy. The result showed vessel preservation was associated with less blood, blood loss, less pancreatic fistula, and shorter hospital stay. So the authors concluded that vessel preservation is preferred in SPDP. But in this paper, the authors studied splenic vessel patency after vessel preservation. They showed the patency of preserved vein became poorer as time goes by, while arterial patency was remained. So they concluded that there would be a risk of left-sided portal hypertension after vessel preserving SPDP. For vessel preserving SPDP, I personally prefer individual ligation of small tributaries. Some surgeons prefer using energy device. Sometimes dividing splenic vessels from the pancreas may induce bleeding. Sometimes it can be done safely. In some situations, excessive manipulation of splenic vessels may induce thromboembolism in portal system. But I think short segmental resection like this may not be associated with bleeding, thromboembolism, or vessel patency issues. In summary, Splenic vessel preservation technique is the most physiologic, and I think it is suitable for short segmental resection. However, it is associated with relatively more bleeding risk. It is difficult and time-consuming procedure, and sometimes it may induce thromboembolism in portal system. The second, I present splenic vessel ligation technique. Splenic vessel ligation technique, it is called Walsher procedure. MGH group including Andrew Walsher reported their 23 years experience of Walsher procedure. They concluded Walsher procedure had a low postoperative failure rate and gastric barracks has had no clinical risk in long-term follow-up. This single institutional study showed Splenic infarction occurred in 54% of Walsh procedure, but all of them resolved spontaneously, and gastric varics didn't make clinically relevant complication. 
This meta analysis showed blood loss favor was a procedure, but all other features, including complication, showed superior in vessel preservation. So the authors concluded both techniques are feasible and effective, but vessel preservation should be given priority, and the procedure should be regarded as a salvage operation. Here's my case. The 6 cm side SPN was located in pancreas tail. I did washer procedure. In this distal portion, pancreas T was located into deep of splenic hilum, and about half of splenic vessels were included. So I transected the vessels with endogia. After resection, the splenic color was not so bad. You can see the demarcation line here, but this portion looked fresh, so I left the spleen. In post-operative CT scan, you can see almost spleen showed ischemic change, but the patient had no symptom and sign. After 3 months and 9 months, the splenic perfusion gradually resolved. Most studies showed that gastric ferric septal wash procedure didn't make clinically relevant complications, but I'd like to show my case. 53 years old female patient underwent laparoscopy SPDP wash procedure due to SPN. There was no unusual findings except partial splenic ischemia in postoperative CT scan. After three months of operation, she visited ER due to abdominal pain, and the CT scan showed intramural hematoma in gastric wall without perforation. We assessed it was intramural bleeding of submucosal gastric barracks. After conservative management, she recovered and the hematoma resolved spontaneously. In summary, washer procedure has a benefit of relatively simple and takes less time, but there are the risk of varix and splenic infarction, although they can be almost treated with conservative management. The last, I'd like to talk about other techniques. The first is lasso technique. This technique is simultaneous division of pancreas parenchyma and splenic vessels when transecting proximal end. This technique has a risk of bleeding from arterial stump because it is clamped together with other structures. So the authors of this paper introduced modified lasso technique. After ligating individual splenic artery, divide pancreas parenchyma and splenic vessels simultaneously. Sometimes we can encounter a patient whose splenic artery is inside the pancreas in the imaginary transection line. In this situation, you can choose whether transecting more pancreas in the proximal portion where it can divide vascular structure from the pancreas or transecting the pancreas in the planned line using modified lasso technique. In this patient, splenic vessels were free from the pancreas, but there was adhesion around the imaginary transaction line. It was difficult to proceed further. And in this patient, splenic artery was encased by the pancreas. It was difficult to get free artery from the pancreas in the transaction line. Fortunately, I could find the artery in proximal portion. And I ligated and transected pancreas with modified lasso technique. 
can see the artery and venous stump here. Here's the last. Sometimes we encounter a patient whose pancreas tail tip is located in deep inside the splenic hilum. The tail tip is encased by splenic hyla vessels. In this case, how can we preserve the spleen? In this case series, the authors performed central pancreatectomy without anastomosis of distal remnant pancreas. They reported that there was no significant complication and it was a safe and effective procedure. I think we can apply this technique for spleen preservation. In this patient, I transected and left pancreas tail inside the splenic hilum. This is spleen. You can see branching vessels here. In this patient, I divided simultaneous pancreas and splenic vessels using endogia during washing procedure. You can see the vessels and pancreas stump here. In post-operative CT, deep tail was left here. There was no significant complication. Last year, there were seven patients with remnant pancreas tail tip after laparoscopic SBDP. Among them, six patients had no significant complication. Their pancreas tail were left only on the splenic hilum at distal portion inside branching the splenic vessels. Only one patient whose remnant pancreas tail above the hyla vessels had complication, fluid collection. You can see the CT scan of the seventh patient. Pancreas tail was left above the splenic hilum and there was complicated fluid collection. So this patient underwent gastrocystostomy. Therefore, I think we should try to remove whole pancreas if possible. But in some situations, small remnant tail in splenic hilum may be acceptable in terms of complications. I think this line is acceptable line. In summary, various methods for spleen preservation in laparoscopic distal pancreatectomy have pros and cons. We should be aware of the advantages and disadvantages of these various methods in order to cope with the sudden situations we will encounter during surgery. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you for your nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, so until now, we in the chatting session, there are no uh, Question. Okay, I'm going to have a one question to the Dr. Shin. Uh, so you showed one case of uh, um, pancreatic leakage uh, for seventh case of uh, remnant pancreas. Do you think it is uh, uh, from the proximal pancreas or distal pancreas, the leakage? Uh, actually, I, I cannot uh, sure. I cannot. Uh, be sure where it is from, uh, but uh, I actually, actually, I, I cannot be sure. <laughs> I, I think the leakage from the uh, proximal, uh, uh, not by the distal. But uh, but I'm going to have some question about if the remnant pancreas is there. Uh, question about uh, <laughs> some problem. Okay, but you 
uh, presented seven case, very uh, nice uh, results. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much for your nice presentation. We are now going to next presentation. Doc thank you, thank you Dr. Shin. Thank you. Uh, the third presentation is uh, from China, Chinese surgeon is, uh, uh, his name is Jin Hong Chen. He is a uh, chief surgeon of professor of uh, uh, hepatobiliary department of general surgery, Huashan Hospital in Fudan University in Shanghai. Uh, today, he is going to present about the uh, uh, left hepatic vein preferential approach for laparoscopic living donor hepatectomy. Uh, so he is not on the uh, online, but he is going to present by the previous recorded. Okay, presentation, please. Dear Chairman of the conference, fellow colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Annyeonghaseyo. My name is Chen Jinghong. I'm from the Department of General Surgery, Huashan Hospital. Fudan University, Shanghai, China. I'm honored to be invited here. The topic of my speech today is left hepatic vein preferential approach for laparoscopic living donor left lateral section anatomy. Living donor liver transplantation is a common form of liver transplantation, especially in pediatric liver transplantation. Since Brazil's Raya et al. completed the first LDLT surgery in 1989, LDLT has developed rapidly, providing even better outcomes than cadaveric liver transplantation. Because living donors are healthy adults, it's important to ensure their safety and minimize physiological and psychological damage. With the development of surgical techniques in laparoscopic resection, laparoscopic method has become the most common method for performing left lateral hepatectomy. Laparoscopic living donor hepatectomy has the advantages of minimal trauma, rapid recovery and accurate local anatomy, and it's expected to be the standard surgical procedure for left lateral lobe donation. However, many studies report a longer operating time in laparoscopic operations compared with open surgery due to the restriction of technique itself, and it's also recommended to be conducted by experienced hepatobiliary surgeons in tertiary medical center. Uncontrolled intraoperative hemorrhage is the greatest risk in acquisition of grafts from living donors by pure laparoscopic for LDLT. During transection of the liver parenchyma, vein latch should be managed carefully and excessive stretching should be avoided when the parenchyma is exposed. Proper management of the left hepatic vein is also essential to avoid massive hemorrhage. Different from hepatic artery and portal vein, hepatic vein was difficult to expose out of the liver. In most of the previous articles of laparoscopic living donor hepatectomy, hepatic parenchyma was usually managed before hepatic vein. In Dr. Gotire's article, they described that they prefer to do the parenchymal division after a liver mobilization and afferent vessel dissection, then button up to the hepatic venous entry to avoid bleeding during hepatic vein dissection. It was suggested by most surgeons to deal with the hepatic vein after the transection of the liver parenchyma. Our institute was the first medical center carrying out laparoscopic living donor left lateral section anatomy in eastern China in 2016. During this years, over 20 cases were completed per year. The average operation time was shortened from 170 minutes to 150 minutes now, much shorter than previous reports. The most important factor regarding the safety and speed of performing such a procedure was our considerable experience with laparoscopic livery section. 
before performing LLLS, more than 700 laparoscopic delivery section and 30 donor graft acquisition procedures were performed by our team. The other reason is a technique that I would like to introduce today, left hepatic vein preferential approach, LHVPA. Based on Professor Nakamula's research, the morphological variation of middle and left hepatic vein can be classified into five types and even more subtypes. In type 2D, 3D, and type 5, left upper branch or left branch was directly imported into inferior vena cava. In our institute, based on the Nakamula classification, the hepatic vein was defined as the direct import type, upper branch type, or indirect import type according to whether it could be anatomically separated extrahepatically. Three-dimensional vascular reconstruction was routinely performed for all donors before the operation to obtain more information regarding any vascular variations. For the direct import type or the upper branch type, the left hepatic vein or the upper branch of the left hepatic vein was isolated extrahepatically. In these cases, donors were included in the LHVPA group. In this way, when transection of the liver was close to the second hepatic hyaline, it could be handled more easily without concern regarding damage to the left hepatic vein. From October 2016 to November 2019, our center had completed 706 liver transplantations included 113 LDLTs. Among them were 50 donors under one LLLS. There were 16 males and 34 females. Noteworthily, our mean operative duration was 157.5 minutes and no intraoperative transfusions needed. More importantly, the mean warm ischemic time was 4.7 minutes. All donors recover fully without further complications, and the mean length of hospital stay was six days. We then compared the outcomes of donors between the LHVPA group and the non-LHVPA group, which included both the direct import type and the upper branch type. And excitingly, the mean operative duration was much shorter in the LHVPA group than that of non-LHVPA group. Blood loss was also decreased in the LHVPA group compared with the other one. The length of the left hepatic vein reserved extrahepatically in the LHVPA group was longer than that of non-LHVPA group. None of the left hepatic veins and direct import type in the LHVPA group needed rebuilding while four in the non-LHVPA group did. Furthermore, comparison between the outcomes of donors during the initial period and recent period shows that shorter operation time in the LHVPA group resulted from the procedure itself rather than a learning curve. The operative duration was significantly shorter during the recent period than the initial period, while the blood loss was also decreased in the recent period than the initial period. There was no significant difference in warm skimming time between the two periods. There were seven cases in the LHVPA group and five cases in the non-LHVPA group in recent period, while six cases in the LHVPA group and five cases in the non-LHVPA group in initial period. Well, here now showing some brief steps of our operative procedures, including isolating the left hepatic artery and left branch of the portal vein, isolating the left hepatic vein, transecting the liver parenchyma, isolating and clipping the left hepatic bile duct, overhanging the remaining liver parenchyma, 
and removing the graft. Ligation was using hemolock and titanium clips, and ribbons of different colors were used to label hepatic artery, portal vein, and hepatic vein. Well, now that we've talked briefly about the LHVPA approach, let's take a look at a video of more details. The first port of hepatis was dissected, which facilitated exposure of the left, middle, and the right hepatic arteries. Isolated and overhung the left hepatic artery with a red ribbon. Pulling the left hepatic artery to the upper right to facilitate exposure of the portal vein. After that, the left branch and the left caudate branch of portal vein were visualized and dissected. Double clip and divided the left caudate branch of portal vein. Isolated and overhung the left branch of portal vein with a blue ribbon. Here in this case, according to the Nakamura classification of the anatomy of the hepatic vein, the left hepatic vein was defined as the upper branch type, indicating that the upper branch of the left hepatic vein should be isolated extrahepatically. The upper branch of the left hepatic vein was isolated and labeled with a green ribbon. The division line of the left lobe was checked and marked with electrocautery, and the liver parenchyma was divided. Clamped and incised the glutsonium pedicle of segment 4. Double clip and divided the hepatic vein of segment 4A. Dissect the tissues around the first port of hepatis. Isolated and divided the left hepatic duct. The remaining liver parenchyma was overhung by a catheter and transected gradually. The catheter went under the upper branch of the left hepatic vein and encircled only the left hepatic vein.
isolated, and over a hand the left hepatic vein with a blue ribbon. The left lateral lobe was placed into a specimen bag. Double clip and divided the left hepatic artery and the left branch of portal vein. Double clip and divided the left hepatic vein and the upper branch of the left hepatic vein. The left lateral lobe was removed from the transverse incision above the pubis. This is our team of hepatobiliary surgery in Huashan Hospital. Each year we perform like approximately six to seven hundred liver surgeries, and pretty much one third of those were laparoscopic liver resections. And we complete more than 200 liver transplantations per year. Well, that's all from my part, and thank you for your patience. Any question will be welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank thank you. you. <laughs> so some uh, problem of uh, uh, June, but a uh, uh, very nice presentation. So, but uh, there are no question from the audience. Uh, so, uh, uh, Dr. Zhang? Yeah, can, can you, you hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So I, I'm going to have uh, just uh, one question. You show yeah. uh, um, left hepatic vein preferential approach, but uh, I cannot get a good concept of that. So what is the difference between the uh, uh, left hepatic preferential approach and uh, older uh, uh, technique? Please say once once more. Can you, Doctor Zhang? Can you hear? Um, you, you mean the speaker, Dr. Chen, from... Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know if he is uh, yes or not uh, at the moment. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, oh, sorry about uh, I have some confusion. Okay. Uh, Dr. Yeah, uh, I'm Dr. Chen. Not, yeah. Not, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, our co-chair okay. is Dr. Zheng is here. Nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah. So, uh, nice to meet you, okay. Dr. Lee. The presentation is from the, another Chinese doctor. So we are going to skip the, um, the question. Okay. So Dr. Zheng, okay. can, can you introduce the last presenter from Korean doctor? Can you do? Okay. 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 Uh, last uh, Korean doctor, Dr. Yeah. Han Yong Se. Okay. Uh, his uh, topic is laparoscopic right side uh, donor hepatectomy, tips and uh, peaceful. Uh, he is uh, from Yong <coughs> Yongpok National University School of Medicine. Please, Dr. Han. Welcome, Dr. Han, Good to afternoon. make a speech. Chairman and visual conference live viewers. I'm Yang Sukam from Gyeongbuk National University Hospital, Daegu, Korea. Thank you for inviting me to an interesting and enjoyable conference, and I am so grateful that I have to meet you in this form. Today, what I'd like to talk about is um, key techniques and skills of laparoscopic right side hepatectomy. As you know, right hepatectomy or right posterior sectionectomy. 
Living donor liver transplantation is the most common type of liver transplant performed in Korea. In living donor liver transplantation, donor safety is the first priority and the incidence of major complications in donors is reported to be about 1 to 3 percent. This is the most important issue in LDLT. Laparoscopic hepatectomy has several advantages and disadvantages. Reduced morbidity, shorter hospital stay, decreased bleeding, less post-operative pain, and better cosmesis are the main advantages. Living donation forces many sacrifices from donors. Huge, huge scar, severe post-operative pain, long hospital stay, and delayed recovery, including delayed return to work or quality life. Therefore, donors, especially young donors, are quite reluctant to donate, so the laparoscopic approach should continue to be discussed. Laparoscopic surgery offers many advantages from a surgeon's point of view, especially together with a high-quality imaging system, uh, precise and accurate dissection can be done in even deep space, retrohepatic space, without excessive liver retraction with better spatial anatomy recognition and more faster and easier suturing can be accomplished. In addition, the laparoscopic caudal approach allows safe dissection of the hepatic hollow and lateral hepatic IBC. Since December 2014, I have been performing about 250 uh, liver transplants at our hospital until 2020. Living donor liver transplantation still accounts for more than 65% of total liver transplantation in our team. Since 2016, a totally laparoscopic approach has been steeply, steeply increased in living donor hepatectomy. And that since 2018, we have performed a totally laparoscopic approach in almost every living donor hepatectomy. These open two cases are another one donor of two dual graft LDLT. From 2016 to December 2020, we performed 109 cases of pure laparoscopic donor hepatectomy. 91% of pure laparoscopic donor hepatectomy was right hepatectomy. And the three uh, right posterior section grafts were uh, procured by pure laparoscopic hepatectomy. From now, I will talk uh, uh, about lip, laparoscopic living donor right hepatectomy. The patient position and the port insertion size are as shown on this slide. I stand on the right side of the patient in all laparoscopic hepatectomy. The left semilateral decubitus position is preferred when completely mobilizing the right lobe and the inferior vena cable. So in right hepatectomy and right posterior sectionectomy, I favor uh, this position, and I use the uh, suprapubic incision for the uh, graft uh, extraction. I also perform the laparoscopic living liver mobilization as you see medial to lateral approach. This video shows uh, the right rope mobilization. At first, uh, Fashable ligament is being transected using energy device. Suprahepatic IVC is uh, exposed. And the right hepatic vein and the middle hepatic vein uh, the checked. It is advantageous for full mobilization of the river to separate the coronal ligament of the river dome from the diaphragm as much as possible. The posterior uh, coronal ligament uh, of the river is incised from the bottom of the inferior uh, hepatic IVC toward to the triangular ligament. This is triangular ligament.
And the liver must be carefully lifted with a retractor to prevent liver injury. The right adrenal gland can be separated with great difficulty with uh, the use of ultrasonic energy device. And the lateral hepatic IVC is easily able to be dissected by caudal approach. Uh, if the caudal lobe is cut beforehand, it may be helpful to complete the hepatic hilum dissection and liver parenchymal transection in the next step. This video shows uh, liver laparoscope liver parenchymal transection in laparoscopic uh, living donor right hepatectomy. Firstly, uh, transect the caudate rope to behind the hepatic hollow. Uh, these two traction uh, stitches are very useful for the adequate widening of a transection line. Superficial radio is uh, dissected with the ultrasonic device uh, along the demarcation line. And the dim radio is meticulous dissected with the combination of laparoscopic CUSA, ultrasonic device, and uh, various clippings with the metal clip and the hemorrhoid clip. During the liver parenchymal dissection, to identify the branch of the middle hepatic vein is the important step. This is the V5, the branch of middle hepatic vein. And the multiple small glycine pedicles and the hepatic veins are ligated and occur after multiple clipping. And the liver parenchymal transection is continued along the transaction line. The V5 is carefully dissected. After the full mobilization of the full dissection of the V5, uh, V5 is uh, transected after hemorrhoid clipping, and the V8 is also transected after hemorrhoid clipping. Uh, this video shows the final uh, steps of laparoscopic living donor uh, right hepatectomy. Uh, first, uh, cover the right row with a plastic bag for quick extraction. Cutting the right hepatic artery and the right fertile vein is uh, transected after stapling with the TA. And the small right inferior hepatic veins are dissected and cut after clipping. Uh, at this point, it is uh, important to not to rush. Uh, no matter how slow you take, you can finish this step in 10 to 15 minutes. Cable ligament is partially transected for easy uh, dissection of the back side of the uh, right hepatic vein. Right hepatic vein is transected after stapling with the endo TA and the Remnant, hepatic, remnant cable ligament is uh, transected uh, after clipping or stapling. Sometimes we meet the donors uh, with a severe portal vein anomaly. This case uh, has um, uh, very complex portal vein structures. The detailed preparation is required. These uh, are donors preoperative CT and MRC finding. Fortunately, the structure of donor's uh, hepatic artery and bile duct had a usual uh, branching pattern. This video shows pure laparoscopy living donor right hepatectomy with a severe portal vein anomaly. Uh, you can see the meticulous hepatic hyaluron dissection and careful portal vein dissection by laparoscopic caudal approach. A typical portal branches uh, to right row were isolated and uh, uh, 
uh, tapes. And uh, all right hepatic artery is also encircled with a vessel row. After confirmation of transaction right temp by temporary clamping of inflow of right row, river parenchymal transaction is conducted using laparoscopic CUSA and energy devices. V5 and V8 were also transected. Right hepatic duct was identified and transected using the direct visualization of intraoperative ICG fluorescence cholangiography. After transaction of right hepatic duct, every portal vein branches of right row were identified. Right hepatic artery is first ligated and curved. And sequentially, right fertile veins are transected using hemorrhagic clip and the, and the TA. And the additional hemorrhagic clip. In bench work, the portal veins were reconstructed to one orifice. In donor hepatectomy, like uh, other hepatectomy, it is very important to uh, minimize uh, bleeding during surgery. Keeping the lower CVP is a very important factor, and the patient uh, position, head up and the left lateral decubito position for a hepatectomy is a significant factor uh, to decrease bleeding during laparoscopic hepatectomy. During the hep Parenchymal transection and retrohepatic IVC dissection, the bleeding risk is high, but because of low CVP and the patient position and meticulous dissection, the transection field is able to be dry and clear without finger maneuver. Recently, intraoperative fluorescence cholangiography using ICG have been, has been introduced. Now, uh, I use only intraoperative fluorescence cholangiography. As it is now, you can we can directly look at the bile duct image, identify the right hepatic duct under the direct dynamic imaging field. Uh, this donor has two right hepatic ducts, but this is no problem. And after cutting the right uh, hepatic duct. We can confirm uh, immediately the injury and security of the in, uh, remaining left hepatic duct. Real time intraoperative imaging of extrahepatic bilirubin system by intraoperative fluorescence cholangiography identify crucial anatomy to obtain a critical view and the results in lower rates of inadvertent bilirubin injury. And from now, I will talk about laparoscopic living donor right posterior sectionectomy. Right posterior section section graft is a useful alternative to expand uh, the living donation. This is a laparoscopic right posterior section donor hepatectomy. Uh, these are preoperative CT imaging. Uh, donor has been has a type three uh, type three portal variation in independent uh, uh, right uh, posterior portal vein and multiple right uh, uh, inferior hepatic veins are identified. This video is uh, extended right for serial section nectomy for living donor, living liver donation. Uh, right row mobilization is the same with right hepatectomy. Right side of right uh, uh, hepatic harum is uh, dissected carefully. The right portal, right posterior portal vein, which is the first branch of main portal vein, is being uh, dissected and uh, isolated. And the right posterior hepatic artery is also isolated. After careful dissection, probably right uh, uh, Posterior hepatic duct and cystic artery are checked. After temporary cramping, 
the transaction line is confirmed after ICG injection. The surface of uh, parenchymal transaction of light for serial section sectionectomy is very wide than another hepatectomy and uh, maintaining the transaction line is very difficult. After traction sutures, parenchymal transaction is started. Sometimes it is very difficult to uh, decide the correct transaction line. So repeated checking using ultrasonography and uh, preoperative CT imaging are uh, very important to confirm the exact transaction plan so, to prevent the injury of right anterior section. Right posterior hepatic duct is cut using intraoperative fluorescence cholangiography. Fluorescence image is checked with MICP image after the identification of right anterior and left hepatic duct. Right hepatic Right posterior hepatic duct is uh, cut. The remnant river parenchymal transaction is uh, continued. This step is very tiresome. Finally, uh, We can see the retro hepatic IVC. From now, the final step of laparoscopy leaving donor right for stair sectionectomy. The flocculo liver is enveloped with a plastic bag with, uh, to extract rapidly. Cutting the right for stair hepatic artery and uh, stapling with the TA right for stair portal being transected. Small right uh, uh, inferior hepatic veins are uh, transected after uh, multiple clipping with a metal clip or hammer clip. Right hepatic vein is also transected after stapling with the endo TA. Donor and the recipient uh, implant are followers patent. Possibly laparoscopy leaving donor hepatectomy for uh, potential donors in adult to adult LDLT has various advantages in less wound morbidity and faster rehabilitation. However, the aim of laparoscopic living donor hepatectomy of surgeons is not the cosmetic satisfaction, but less pain and to decrease the complications. Therefore, experience of laparoscopic major hepatectomy and the living donor liver transplantation are essential for the safe laparoscopic living donor hepatectomy. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Very uh, nice presentation. Um, so there are no questions from the internet, but uh, uh, Dr. Zhang, do you have any yeah. questions? Oh. Uh, just a simple question. Okay. Uh, a very, very nice lecture regarding the light uh, 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 hepatectomy, liver donor uh, hepatectomy. Uh, you, you described the uh, ICG use. You use ICG uh, uh, systematically, uh, routinely, or select the patients. What kind of situation you use ICG? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for. Uh, uh, good question. And uh, I think uh, in recently, uh, actually, I, uh, ICG fluorescence technique is a uh, uh, very important technique for uh, laparoscopic hepatectomy. So uh, I uh, usually and uh, maybe uh, all pay, all donors, I use the uh, ICG uh, intraoperative fluorescence technique uh, because of the 
uh, the technique is uh, uh, show the direct visualization of the bile duct and the uh, uh, after the uh, uh, transect the bile duct, uh, I uh, uh, I confirm the uh, uh, left hepatic duct safe the safety of the left hepatic duct and the security. So and the uh, sometimes the uh, we can um, we cannot we cannot expand uh, inspect the uh, demarcation line sometimes so uh, ICG fluorescence fluorescence technique uh, using the ICG fluorescence technique uh, demarcation line uh, the precise and the exact pre transaction line we can uh, uh, compound. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Very good uh, question and answer. And uh, Dr. Han, I'm one question. Yeah. Can you tell me the uh, exact uh, how uh, how many minutes before uh, you see in the ICG? Okay, injection time. Ah, uh, yeah. ICG. Uh, ICG fluorescence technique. Uh, in ICG fluorescence technique, I think the uh, injection time is a very important point. Uh, so uh, we uh, uh, to uh, to confirm the uh, uh, exact bile duct uh, image. I think uh, uh, thirty to sixty minutes. Before the 30, 60 minutes for uh, bile duct transaction, uh, I inject the ICG. Okay, okay. thank you. Very uh, good information. So, uh, so uh, thank you for your nice presentation. The, uh, if, uh, now we are closing time, but uh, I just uh, uh, introduced uh, my co-chair, Dr. Jung Min Hua. He's working in Jiatong University Region Hospital in Shanghai. Uh, some uh, technical problem, he uh, joined uh, uh, our session a, a little late. So nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to okay. meet you. Okay, okay. sorry. Uh, good presentation. And uh, uh, I'm going to close this session. Thank you very much for joining the uh, Korean-Chinese joint session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.